everyone. First of all, sorry for any of the background noise. Where I live is like right next to a highway. So the walls are thin. I'm so sorry. If it's distracting, just know this is not something that I plan. But on to the topic at hand. The key to successful biblical fasting. First of all, before you go on a fast, you have to be clear why you're fasting. Okay, you have to know what the intention and the goal is for the fast that you are about to undertake. You have to also be led by the spirit. I'm sure a lot of you have heard people say that or a lot of commenters have also put that you must be led by the Spirit, and you are 100% right. Being led by the Spirit helps you. He strengthens you and gives you the grace to uphold and complete the fast that you have ahead of you. So how do you know if you're being led by the Spirit? You will have that grace. But before we even go in there, I forgot to also say that you can also ask for the Holy Spirit to lead you into the fast that he desires for you in the situation that you're in. You see that there's, a, there's you know, chaos, t- things are topsy-turvy, you know, life is just going to the opposite spectrum of what you wanted it to be, or you can... St- You can sense that the devil is in the details and you realize that you need deliverance or you need to draw nearer to God. You can always pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you into the fast that you need to be in to protect you and for you to lean on his strength during this time. But first of all, I am not telling you, anyone, to just jump in and fast. If you are not baptized, and I mean a biblical fast, if you're not baptized in the Holy Ghost Spirit, if you're not, um, which you have to do first, um, because that guarantees that you will have that guidance and protection from the Most High covering you and the success rate of your fast goes up that much more. So I definitely say, make sure that you are baptized. Repent, repent of your sins. And I'm not just saying this because a lot of people put up these signs like repent, repent. I didn't know for a long time what, 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 what is repent? Repenting is you coming to God. It's, it's, it's also a sign of sincere humbleness, humbling yourself, humility, by presenting these sins so God can, can wash you clean and you can be blameless before him to continue on to the fast. And even more importantly, so while you're on this fast, Satan and his cohorts cannot hold anything against you, that he cannot, cannot cause you to mess up the fast that you you'll have a much higher success rate so repenting washes you clean remember god is not like man and even though repenting is just more than an apology like when you repent and you show true remorse for your sins when you come before him he Blots it out like it never happened. You come to him clean, brand new. And I'm going to tell you a story about how repenting helps you in your walk and with deliverance. It was um, it was the same story with the young lady that was my first time really experiencing a deliverance ministry like that. And before I went, because I've always heard that, and a lot of people tell me this, why they don't want to do deliverance ministry, because they fear that Satan will speak out their sin, you know, their hidden sins. He will, he will, 
blurt them out. So I remember repenting of all my sins before. And like I said, you've got to do it all the time. And in repenting, you are coming to the father for him to, uh, to, to know that this is something that you acknowledge as being sinful and not of him. And you want to right your wrong. You don't want to do this. You don't want to live in the bondage of sin anymore. And for him to release you from that captivity by completely blotting out the sin and giving you a new canvas. And he's not holding it against you. Therefore, you can start afresh. And your fast is going to be that much more, I won't say smooth, but smoother than had you gone in with all these sins still hanging off you and lurking in in your mind. So when I repented of these sins, the devil, he couldn't say anything. He couldn't hold me. He didn't know anything about, about my sinful, any sins that were in me because I'd already repented of them. On the flip side, there was another young lady who... Uh, there was another young lady who had fallen out. She was um, being demonically influenced by an ancestral spirit. And I know when y'all hear me, if if y'all are not, if this is too much for you, you are, you can always click out. If this is too much for you and you are not um, real with, with what the time and, and the day and age we live in, you can always click out. But for those who understand what I'm talking about, you know what I'm saying right now. This lady fell out from an ancestral spirit at the, the church. She came seeking deliverance. And there was another lady, two of them that were there who are, you know, part of our, uh, our, our deliverance team at the time. And she was trying to command these demons out. But then the demons told her that how are you going to try to, basically, how are you going to try to, to, to command me out when you're still part of my kingdom. You know, you're drinking. So he pointed out that she was still involving herself in alcohol. And so therefore he still had a stronghold on her. So with that happening, she she told the pastor what happened and she could have just repented. But that is how I try to say when you repent, you, you're bringing yourself to God to be, for him to wipe out those sins and for you to be blameless so the enemy can't hold anything against you. Amen? That is the importance of repentance when walking in your purpose and deliverance ministry. Okay? You anoint yourself. The Bible says that when it comes to, to fasting, you anoint your head, wash your face, exactly what it says. Do that. Nobody needs to know that you're fasting. No one. At the time, I didn't have a choice. And God understood. He understood. He is an understanding God. Some of us beat ourselves up so much, and then we stop the fast, and we're like, no. He's an understanding guy. He's a good God. I don't know why some people try to make him look like he is uh, outside of the character that we know him as. A wonderful, amazing, loving God. Um, so you don't need to tell anyone. There are people who like to go out and let people know that they are praying and, and that they're fasting. There are exceptions, but for the most part, you... Follow the Bible. Don't be like the Pharisees, the hypocrites, that they need to let everybody know that they're, they're, they're praying. Just go about your day and just keep in communication with God. You, you can pray in your heart, pray in your mind, all that. Um, another thing is besides trying to limit distractions as much as possible. You know, you don't want to have the TV on, especially with the things that they tend to promote a lot. You don't want to do that. If you could cut off the internet as much as possible, do that. Um, drown out the, like the environment, set your environment with praise and worship 
uh, set it to, you know, if, if you have the, what is that? The, the Bible that, like the audio Bibles, you can do that as well. You don't want to, you want to make the devil uncomfortable. So he's not going to be in there trying to disrupt what's going on between you and God. Also, I have a prayer closet. Amen. A prayer closet, a your little battle closet where you go in. I didn't really have a closet in my mother's house. It was really tiny. And so I can really go into it or um, anywhere. But if you have a prayer closet or sometimes I go in the bathroom, that works just fine. Um, people were asking me about the tongues. See, when it came to speaking tongues, it was not right away. I know, however, that the, the initiation with the 40-day fast, the revelation, the transformation and renewal during this time was what assisted me and led to the breaking down of whatever was holding me back from speaking in the, the new language. I desired to speak to God in that different language. I desired to be have direct communication to him. My desires were set towards God. And he gives you the desires of his heart, of your heart. So like Jesus said, he was our, our best example. He told you what to do and how to get whatever it is that you want. Basically, you have to have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You have to know him. You have to have the word inside of you. The word, his word, that's how close he lives inside of you, in your heart. That indwelling. You got to love him. Love the Father. You love him, you love the Father. That what that's what it's it means when he says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. Not and and don't get me wrong when I said greater is he that is in you, because a lot of people tend to make that seem like that's self worship. No, sorry. No man. I'm telling you, when it comes to even deliverance ministry, when you start to be not just heroes of the word and doers of the word, you will start to understand. When you start putting your faith in action, you'll start to understand what I'm saying. By yourself, you cannot command demons out of a person. By yourself, you cannot heal the sick. By yourself, you cannot bring the dead back. It is all, all through the will of our Father, through God, through Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, which is all God the indwelling of the spirit. He is the one that is working, not you. So when I read that example of when before Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead and he first thanked God, he thanked, thank God so that, and then he went on to say that so you can be, see, people can see his glory and know that Jesus is the son of God, that he sent him. So you acknowledge the creator first. Don't walk away thinking that, oh, you know, it was all me. Because that's when pride and pompousness and arrogance and all these other things will slip into your life. When you start thinking that all this power came from you. No, the power source is the almighty God. The almighty Yahuwah. He is our power source. Through him, all good things come. By myself, if I don't acknowledge the Holy Spirit. See, see, this is why y'all have to like put your faith. And if you're not doing these things so you can, you can talk about what's really real and bring God to the people. You have to understand without the Holy Spirit, without acknowledging this power before you do a deliverance ministry. It's going to fail. 
And I know I was talking about fasting, but that is also a part of it. He that dwell, he that has the indwelling in you, he is the one that gives you the strength and the grace to carry on if you decide to do a longer fast. Now, don't get me wrong. I am not telling everybody to do a 40-day fast. Okay, our, our, our needs are different. Our experiences are different. It is up to the creator. If the spirit leads you into 40 or longer, then hallelujah. But if you look in the Bible and you look for the examples of, of when you had the Esther fast, when she did that three-day fasting before they went out into battle, her people went in, out into battle and were victorious. You have the 21-day Daniel fast. 40 day fast, one day fast, like whatever it is that the spirit leads you to do. It might be one, five, three, five, seven, ten, whatever um, number, because we do know that numbers do play a part in deliverance and in, in understanding certain the creator does things. Uh, so you got the Holy Spirit, you got the scripture, you got the armor of God. Can't go into, because fasting, This is even though your body is resting, your spirit is rising. And whatever it is that he is going to reveal to you, if you need to be fighting in, in, in the spirit right there and then, then so be it. Even though it is his spirit, but through your faith, and through your sacri sacrificing that flesh, that carnal nature. See, pe people who aren't spiritual, they don't understand. They think, oh, you're just being silly. Well, you know what? Don't talk to me. If, you don't, if you're not understanding why it is important as a believer for you to fast and pray, then we need to separate. Bible says to separate from these type of people because uh, frankly they're they're not of you. Okay, they cannot stop your divine calling. See the Christian, okay. I did go away from Christianity. But those who follow the body of Christ or the body of Christ itself, pretty much understands the battles that we have to go through. The fires, like daily, we're tried by fire. That's because whatever it is that is coming up at the end, God needs real warriors. Those who have been tried by fire. Those who are, 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 are his and believes in faith that he can do all things. Those who won't faint. Those who at the, the slightest thing don't start blaming God for your problems. I will talk to you about the, the whole Christianity and labeling part in another video, but I'm sorry about what happened before um i do consider myself more a follower of christ and the word and i don't really put a title to myself i'm a believer in the most high i don't believe in organized religion or any denomination of any kind I don't put labels on myself. The Most High Yah. I believe in Jesus Christ. Yahushua HaMashiach. That's who I believe in. It's, you know, you're used to saying a certain thing, but after this, no more. But, 
back to the fasting, biblical fasting, we have to understand that as followers of, of Christ or the body of Christ, that we are constantly being attacked. It is, it is, it is worse for us. Once you have been baptized, you understand what it is. But because we have Jesus, we have Yahushua HaMashiach who came on behalf of us. He died for us. We have his Holy Spirit. We can now reach, we can now go to God through him easily than what in the Old Testament they had to, to go through. You know, Jesus is our adversary. He became our adversary when he was crucified. He took the keys from hell. Understand? So we have a very real adversary on our side. So when we go into fasting and praying and we have the Holy Spirit, he strengthens us so that we don't faint. Because the task ahead of us is that big. He only, only reserves his hardest battles for his strongest warriors. So if at this point you're already fainting, at this point you already don't understand why as the body of Christ you should be disciplining yourself and your life with fasting and praying, you need to either read the Bible some more, pray some more, seek Yah some more, seek his face, seek beyond what you're doing right now. Understand? So it is not an option, as they have pointed out many times, that the Christ did not say if you fast. I know you've all heard this by now. But he said when you fast. So it is something that should be a part of the body of Christ's life. It's like routine. You get attacked. You feel like an attack is coming on. Until it just starts, it's like, it becomes like riding a bicycle. You you know, you getting attacked. Something going on at work. The, um, you know, the bee hive mentality. People are, are ganging up on you. You feel like there's some spiritual attacks. You get into your fasting and praying. You go into to spiritual warfare. Use the word, the sword, the double-edged sword, and you cut the enemy right where you cut him. Cut him where he needs to be cut. Because you have the two-edged sword, the Bible, sharper than any, any sword with you. It's like you're going into battle. So you got the word, your faith. We're talking about the arm of God. Your faith, 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 faith. If you don't have faith, this is just not going to work. This is just not going to work unless you are, if you are not armed with faith, it's just going to mess up your walk before you even start. So the shield of faith is important. Okay. Faith without works is dead indeed. But. Faith is one of the most important tools that you need to continue into your biblical fast. Amen. We talk about your helmet of salvation. You've got to cover your mind. We talked about the battle for your mind. You got that helmet of salvation covering in your mind you anoint your 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 head with the anointing oil because the bible says to anoint your head you wash your face 
the the he knows that the most powerful thing right there is you've got to protect your mind because your mind is also help it's all connected it helps also with your faith because what you believe in what you see through your mind's eye is what's going to help you develop it's what's going to help you in the battle is what's going to help you in the longevity of the fast when you see a thing as how you want to see, when you see a victory, when you start to manifest real truths from the word, then that is what you will move forward to and your faith will move with you. Amen? We talk about the breastplate of righteousness. You've got to be righteous. You've got to have righteousness. You cannot like when you add, when when you repent, you add you also have to forgive. Forgive yourself as well. It's one thing a lot of us find hard to do is to forgive ourselves when we make mistakes or errors. We've got to forgive ourselves. We all have fallen short of the glory of God. We've got to forgive ourselves. We have to understand that we are all sinners. Forgive those who have hurt you. Because that forgiveness helps to release your faith as well and helps to release you from doubt and guilt and despair and, and those strongholds that build up in your mind. Amen? You gird yourself, oh, wait, one more thing on righteousness. When you are righteous, then God can fight on behalf of you. The spirit can represent you fully because you are right. Like we said, if you're going into fasting because you want to hurt somebody or you want to do something bad to someone who never wronged you and you are unforgiving, you got sin in your life. You've got the wrong thoughts and the wrong ideas. You're doing things to be evil. It's just don't even do it. Just saying, don't even do it. It it could backfire royally. Don't even do it. You have to have that righteousness from Christ. Okay, you're not going out there trying to harm and hurt people and be wicked and hypocritical. You got to have that righteousness in your heart. You're doing this for the right reasons. For healing, for for charity, for to 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 grow in faith so that you might help to build the kingdom of God on earth or bring the kingdom of God on earth. Amen. So, we've got that belt of truth. You know, We've got to be truthful to ourselves. We've got the word, which is the truth as well. Using that truth. We talked about the sword, which is his word. The double-edged sword. Charge your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Spreading that gospel. You're not trying to stir up extra things that don't need to be stirred. You are bringing that peace, that encouragement to your brothers and sisters out there. You are spreading that word. You are letting... Because the devil doesn't want your brother or your sister or you to know the love of God. That unconditional love of God. He hates to hear it. And when you get into deliverance ministry, trust and believe you will see. That's how you learn what the enemy hates. When you start talking about the love of God, when you start talking about the sacrifice of God, when you start talking about the salvation Jesus brought, when you start talking about no weapon formed against me shall prosper, when you start talking about how Jesus died on behalf of us, he brought salvation to the world. He shed his blood for us. And because God so loved the world, God so loved his people. 
that he cared that much and that he gave us the power and the authority, the power to trample upon scorpions, snakes and scorpions. Amen. So I know when it comes to fasting, I, I could go on forever, but there's there are a lot of things that that come in my fast might not be something that was ordained for you to do i might have been i had to do this 40 day fast because there was another there was a diff, a task that god had for me to do that was different from what he has for you you might need a 3 day fast to get the same results god works in ways that we can't understand but he also does certain things to build our patience because he's a very patient we just have to trust the process and understand that whatever he does he does for our good there were times when god said be still and know that i am god there were times when he would tell me for i did not give you a spirit of fear but of power love and a sound mind no he has a word for everything to combat every fear and anxiety, jealousy, envy, whatever it is that's coming up in your mind. But as I also said, while fasting, you're doing all this, you have to also do a spiritual check. It doesn't mean that you're not going to still be attacked or influenced by demons. But you have to be diligent in the word. Praise and worship never forget praise never forget praise and never forget thanksgiving praise 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 releases him into the atmosphere he has warrior angels that are just ready to fight your battle for you praise all this will go on when you're when you're fasting i'm not just talking about a 40 day fast but when, depending on what your need is when you make God like the air you breathe, you need him that much. He will show up and show out. He will do wonderful works in your life. I can testify to that. Because he is still working in my life. Even when I don't feel like I deserve it. I, I can't understand. It is not for me to understand how big his love is, but he loves you so much. And I'm being told right now to let you all know this. His endless love and compassion for you knows no bounds. Amen. So there were people who would tell me that sometimes they feel far from God. And we need to examine what's going on in our life at that time. We need to take a, a hard look at who's in our life, who are we surrounded by, and what are we doing, our actions, our inactions. God draws near to you when you draw nearer to him. So if you feel like you're far away from him, I don't necessarily say you have to fast and pray, but you can read the Bible, read the scripture more. You you know, start setting the atmosphere, praying, praise and worship, praising him, giving him praise, talking about him, encouraging your brothers and your sisters, giving to charity, being generous with each other. You know? This is just how it has to be. Generally, as I said before, that we fast and pray because our life is different. When you're baptized into the kingdom and you have you have a task to do you have something that you need to do and the devil is going to always come and try to take that word from you try to rob you of your joy because he don't want you to be happy he don't want you to, to know that life beyond this is even is greater 
that the sticky icky that you're living in is is not what we're supposed to even be in. He doesn't want you to know anything. He doesn't want you to know grace. He doesn't want you to move closer to God because that, in essence, will mean the destruction of his kingdom. Amen. So when you fast and pray, you are basically dying to the flesh. Your flesh is dying. Not you, but your spirit rises. And you know when your spirit rises, and he's the one we already said, the power source. Then you start to do things. You start to heal the sick. You start to command devils out. You'll start to raise the dead. You'll start to heal your land and heal your nation. But you got to put King Stomach under captivity. You've got to bind him. Bind that stomach. You know what I'm saying? The people say you, you're gonna have dizziness. I'm gonna talk about some of the physical effects. You're gonna have some dizziness. You drink more water. I tell you, that's one of the the biggest things that helps. You gotta drink your water, read the word, and deep breathing. And when I mean deep, I mean like deep from the abdomen, from your abdominal area. When you feel like the the you feel a hunger pang coming on, you take a deep breath and drink some water, sip some water, and read the word. Got to take your mind off of the carnalities, or, or the the fleshly things, the sinful nature that we live in. See if you're if you're aiming for kingdom gifts and kingdom things you've got to have a kingdom mindset you can't you can't keep thinking worldly so that is why you have to fast and pray you've got to overcome the physical overcome the flesh and the sin and the, and and the desires and the lust of this life of this sinful life that is why I was saying my mind, I felt clearer. I felt like I was on a, on a different cloud because my spirit had risen up. I was able to smell things that were like far away. My scent was clearer. My eyesight, my hearing. I know when I was saying that testimony, it, that wasn't very clear. Um, Like, I could hear people clearer when they're speaking. You can even hear in the spirit if you get that in tuned. No. When you're praying, when you're fasting and praying, you're asking for these spiritual gifts. You have to believe. You have to have faith. You have to believe. Faith, you believe you already have it. Believe that you already have it. It's your father who gives you good gifts. He he will give it to you according to his will. If this is something that he sees that you can handle, you definitely will not hold it back. And he'll give you the grace to go with you. So um, more on the physical effects. Besides... Spiritually, you know, spiritual warfare, praying at night, um, loosening the bonds, binding whatever came to, was brought to my attention that I needed to bind these spirits that were fighting my life. We bound them in the name of Jesus. You know, decree and declare. The Bible talks about decreeing and declaring and how to use that in your life. My skin cleared up a lot. I never really had a problem with acne, but that got clearer. I lost a lot of weight. And I, at first I was saying that it was water weight, but I went from maybe 
105 or 170 down to 132, which was like my size when I was in my 20s, my mid 20s or so. And uh, you know, your mind is clear. Your mind is is able to just think clearly on a lot of things that you might have been fuzzy or unsure of a lot of decisions that you weren't sure whether or not you should undertake or, or projects in your life promotions you got promotions in the spirit if it is his will promotion in the physical i did say that i i was able to get my house and i was i got married but these weren't things that i was asking for i didn't ask outright for these stuff I asked to be free from living under my parents' roof because, <laughs> as y'all see, not everything, not everyone wants to live with their parents. They don't always want to understand what you're going through. And living with people, sometimes they can get the wrong idea and just want to have you committed or something else. So if they don't understand, they see the glory and they don't understand the story. Yeah. You just got to leave it to God to work on them. But sometimes you just got to separate from that because many times you feed their their negativity and it's not helping them when you're there. So in that moment, God knew he had to separate me and I had to separate from them. So, yes, I was able to leave from my parents. Praise the praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And distance myself from them for the task that he had set out for me. Um, after fasting, I remember someone made a very good point as well. When it comes to breaking your fast, I didn't even speak on that. When you break your fast, you, you, you don't want to do anything hefty. You don't want to go eat a whole full course meal. You want to break your fast with light things, maybe some broth, maybe some soup, some water, um, some fruits, and you build it up over a period of time. Uh, uh, one person also said not to eat bread, and he gave the um, example of after Jesus came back from his fast and when the devil was tempting him, and he talked about turning the stone into bread. And this person made a very interesting um, observation when he said that because your stomach is now shrunk, and that bread, you know, could cause more havoc in your stomach and it kills some people. But I definitely have to do more research on that. But it does make a lot of sense. But when you break your fast, you don't want to jump in and eat all these things. I remember when I was fasting on my 21-day fast, the Holy Spirit put into my spirit that I needed to start eating better. Because I wasn't eating very well. And I had put on a lot of weight. I was stress eating. And it just took my whole life. I went from petite slim to fully voluptuous. And not feeling very well, good about myself, eating unhealthily. And he would put it in my script before I broke my fast that I needed to start eating more of a plant-based diet, you know, and moderate with the meat, moderate with certain things. And I needed to follow how Deuteronomy, how it was directed in the laws for us to eat and why it was important for us to follow this. Because a lot of us are still eating in some filthy ways and we wonder why it is that we go through or have some of the sicknesses that we have but the bible also says you know we can't judge people what they eat nor the day they worship so that's what i got in my spirit it might be different for you whatever the spirit leads you to basically not what i say um yeah, I did. I moved out. Oh, another thing. After the fast, yes, you do get attacked. I, I'm, I'm not saying that to be facetious or anything. I got attacked. 
I did. But by the grace of God, that attack did not, it didn't do anything to me. It just like, I don't know what happened. I was getting attacked. And then all of a sudden, just as fast as it started, it ended. My dad and then some other things were going on and just like, like the confusion was in a whirlwind and then it just whisked off to Never Never Land. And I anointed the house and then peace was in there again. And uh, so people wanted to know if did the things manifest right away. Some things manifested later, maybe two or three months down the line. But, you know, it's all in God's timing. He knows and he sees when is best. But best believe it did happen. I didn't get, I didn't buy my house right away. It was like mm, maybe a few months later and left my parents' house. There's, you know, sometimes some things will happen. You get a little too comfortable and you don't realize that God is unctioning you to make the change. And some things will happen to push you into your destiny. And some things happened, you know. My mom hit into my car and didn't apologize or anything. They just, and right there and then I realized, you know, it's time to leave. It's time to leave. I love them, but I got to love them from afar. And just taken into isolation. And it was, it was, it was a refreshing period where I got to know God more and I got to understand the revelations that were given and why they were given, as well as uh, the question, there was a, a question that had boggled my mind for years with regards to a family member who um, told a blatant lie on me and nobody wanted to tell me what exactly she said. And, um, you you know, someone told me what she said. I think I said that in one of my videos as well. It took this long. And when I found out, then it, it made me understand who my enemies were. Like they were surrounded. I was surrounded by people who were pretending to have my best interest at heart, pretending to be spiritual advisors. And it got me to understand when, when God said, trust no man, you trust God first. I don't need to be listening to this one and this one because... God has my back. And he has your back. Sometimes there are people who are sent into your life. And yeah, he sends people to help you. But like everything has a season. It might dry up. And then you need to go it alone. These people that came into my life under um, false pretense. That they were something that they were not. They were just watching my every existence, sending familiar spirits in my direction and wishing bad for me. And who knows my generation. That fast came so quick. The revelation from it that I knew how I needed to cut these people. I mean, I cut them off with the quickness. I had no clue. Sometimes we have some, some very toxic people that we're holding on to and we think that you know, because they're family or we think that because we've known them so long and we can't believe that they will ever do certain just diabolical things to us. We have to trust when God says what he says. A lot of us, you don't, you want to doubt God and trust in man. And that's why a lot of us are going through some of the heartaches that we go through. We're trusting in the wrong people. We're trusting in man, man who also are laden with sins just like us so god takes you through the process and he shows you some things and why you need to let go of some people of your in your life or why you need to make certain decisions or he pushes you he might allow certain situations to happen in your life to push you towards your destiny because without these things happening many of us would still be stagnant and living in 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 sin and living around certain situations that are just not serving us anymore they're only holding us down so yeah
Um, and a lot of the times when it comes to even our family and trying to change their minds, I know a lot of us have issues with that. We're trying to get them to believe or, you know, certain things that they're just stubborn about. God will work it out. He will definitely work it out. He will make a way where there's no way. So all your worrying, he told you to not worry. If he says he's going to do a thing, he's going to do a thing. He's not like man where he makes promises that he doesn't keep. Trust and believe. Sometimes I feel like I broke promises with him and I just like, I don't understand. That's why I said sometimes I don't feel like I deserve his love. But he loves us unconditionally anyway. He understands what we are going through. Sorry, that was my phone. So we don't understand why he does what he does because he is the creator. We are the creation. What governs him and who he is, is it's not, it's not for us to understand until it is in his time to reveal it. So with that, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to um, bring this to an end. And as always, I always feel like I've never said enough or maybe I missed out on something. And I talked about my manifestation of what I prayed for. It happened in increments. Some happened while I was fasting. Some happen way, even years still happening. But you just have to remember when you're going into this, this type of journey or activity, <laughs> you say activity, but when you fast and pray, you have to remember who is your power source. You are not your power source. If you think this is all in you, you're going to, it's, it's probably not going to work out. I implore you, I beg of you, please, please, please remember. He is your power source. That's why I said, depend on the Holy Spirit so he can give you grace and he can lead you. And lead you to completion of your fast and help to renew you and heal you and give you revelation and when he takes some people out your life, you got to understand. He, you can't see what he sees going on in the background. He's all seeing. So what you don't see, you don't see people who are plotting for you. He saw it way before. And he just needed you to make that faith move so you, he could release him to do what he needed to do for you. He's doing it all for you. Amen. So with that, I'm going to close out. God bless you and your families. Until later, I bid you good night.